for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. And if you would like the opportunity to talk with the owner of Low Overhead Country, better known as Frontier Motors, Ivan Strucko is to whom I refer, give us a call. You have a half hour to get the price of a car, truck, SUV, make a comment, ask a question, anything about the used car business, 478-3116. Then I, because I have the power, will connect you as if by magic to Ivan Strickle. Good morning, Ivan. Hey, Don. Thanks so much for the introduction. And this is... The Frontier Motor Show, like Don said, we are live on the radio, 1370 Talk Radio. We're also videotaping this for our Blab TV customers. So if you're watching this on TV, either cable or satellite, uh, the we're probably not, we're all live, but we're not live. Because <laughs> we tape this show in the morning, and uh, we talk a little bit what's going on in the car industry nationwide, also uh, in Pensacola, and a little bit what's going on at Frontier Motors, not that anybody that's listening at this moment really needs a car, but you never know. I've been doing the show going on 20 years, actually almost for 21 years now. November is our 21st year anniversary. So we're going on our 22nd year in business at Frontier Motors. And when we started this show, the Blab and the radio show, uh, this is an advice show. It's not so much a show about selling cars at Frontier Motors, but the fact that there's a dealership in town that when you are in the market for a car, that's here to help you to make sure that you don't get ripped off. And to me, that's the uh, that's more important than just selling a car. And because we help so many people get good deals, even if they're buying maybe privately or somewhere else, another car dealership, maybe a brand new car, they send us all their friends and relatives and say, hey, you guys got to check out those guys at Frontier Motors. I was in the market for a brand new car. And you know what they did for me? They told me exactly what that new car costs. And the way that I do that is I have the new car cost guides at the dealership and it gives me the invoice price of any brand new car out there. It's interesting because Consumers Reports sells invoices to the general public and they charge $14 per invoice. We have those available at no charge. And it's really nice to know what a dealer paid for a brand new car because it helps you kind of take the hesitation out of signing a contract if you know that you're getting a good deal. If you know what the dealer paid, give them just a little bit of a profit and then you've got a deal. The other thing that we help you with if you're going to buy a brand new car is we give you a second opinion on what your trade is worth. There's always been that I'm not getting enough for my trade or they're not giving me enough discount on the car. Well, the way that we sit down with you is by doing the research on what you should be paying for the new car, but also what would we write a check for, for your trade in. And we'd love to have people come in off the street that are thinking about buying brand new and spend a little bit of time with Frontier Motors, because again, we can tell you what to pay for the brand new one. We can appraise the vehicle you're thinking of trading, because what if we like your vehicle more than the, the dealer you're dealing with. And you never know when that happens. But I've had a lot of customers for all sorts of reasons that have gone to new car dealers or other used car dealerships and have gotten lower appraisals because the appraiser has a bad taste in his mouth about your car. And you never know that because they're always going to make it sound like they're giving you top dollar. But how do you know what that top dollar is unless you stop in front of your motors and get what I call a real value. And I'm not talking about a book value right now. I'm holding up my hand, the NADA guidebook. And that's the guidebook that all of our bankers and uh, uh, insurance companies and credit unions in our areas is used in our areas use. But this is a book value, very similar to the Edmonds and the Kelly blue book. When you go online and I get customer after customer coming in and say, well, I know what my car is worth. Well, I said, how do you know that? I looked it up on the Kelly book. And the Kelly book says my car is worth $21,000. Well, if I'm seeing those cars selling through the auction for $15,000, I'd say you pretty much can throw that Kelly book away. And sometimes it's actually the opposite. For example, on our older Wrangler, the Kelly book might say the Wrangler is worth $5,000, but they're selling on the open market for six or $7,000. So how do you know if the book is right? Well, that's when you call Frontier Motors. And the way that we do our research is we take the book values, obviously. We'll look at the books. We'll look at the black wholesale guidebook. We'll look at the retail book. But most importantly, I'll look in my computer and I will look at what we call the MMR. The MMR stands for Mannheim Market Report. And if you're not familiar with Mannheim, Mannheim is owned by Cox Communications. They're the largest auction chain in the world. We're lucky enough to have one 
right here on W Street. That's a Mannheim auction. And I can get into the Mannheim auctions and I can see they compile the data of every car that's sold in this MMR market report. So for example, if you have a, let's say a hard to appraise car, let's say you're driving a 2017 Forerunner that you bought on a whim. It's got 4,000 miles on it. And you're thinking, well, I want to trade this in for a Toyota, uh, a Toyota Prius because I want to get 50 to 60 miles a gallon and your Forerunner is getting 15 miles a gallon. So how do you find out what the real value is? Well, the way that I do that is I look at the market report to see what I can buy one for at the auction. And that's how we can help you appraise a vehicle with real dollars and say, okay, let's just say hypothetically that figure is $30,000. Well, if you're going to buy it, if you're going to go to the Toyota dealership, buy a, new, a brand new Prius, wouldn't it be nice to know what Frontier Motors is appraising your car for? So that way, if they don't put enough money in your vehicle, you can just sell it right to me. And a lot of people do that. They don't want the what they consider the headache of the trade-in. So what they do is they stop in the front of your motors and they just sell us the car. And it's even been to the point where we have given them a ride to the dealer of their choice where they're going to buy their brand new car. Now, the other thing that sometimes happens while we are appraising your car, and this appraisal process, by the way, doesn't take all day. This is a 15 to 20 minute appraisal process maximum. That way you don't have to spend hours here. We always have at least three appraisers at the lot at all times. So you don't have to wait for a long time to get an appraiser. Some dealerships have one appraiser. And if he's out appraising cars at an auction, there's nobody there to give you that figure. Well, we always, we have five total appraisers and with off time and people being gone at the auction, we always have three there to make sure that you can get that information that you want really quick. So while we're appraising your car and you're thinking about buying a 2016 or 17 Lexus RX 350, well, you're strutting around on the lot looking at cars. Next thing you know, you trip across to 2016 with 10,000 miles on. Of course, the next question would be, well, how much can you save me on your one-year-old car? And I have in writing the first time ever that Consumers Reports has done this in April's edition. They came out with a graph in writing of the depreciation schedule of a brand new car. And they said last year, the average transaction price, not the list price, but the transaction price, this is after rebates and discounts before taxes was $35,000. And they said that in the first year, the average depreciation on a car, this is average, some higher, some lower, but the average depreciation is 27%. Well, when you multiply that out, that's nearly $9,200. So this is not Frontier Motors telling you that if you buy a brand new car, you're going to lose uh, $9,200. This is Consumers Reports. And I, I read Consumers Reports all the time because I love what they talk about in their car division. I love what they talk about when they talk about safety and comfort and reliability. And it pretty much correlates with the real world because I sell these cars for a living. So I read consumers reports to make sure that they're saying the right things that I agree with years ago. That wasn't always like that. I remember years ago, they talked about the, the grand Cherokee being a very, very bad rated vehicle. We sold the heck out of Grand Cherokee. So one of our best-selling vehicles, either they were wrong or people didn't care because people came and bought them. But Consumers Reports has gotten a lot better. They're rating the vehicles really good. And, and an example would be, you know, last year's Consumers Reports. This is not the one that just came out. This is last year's. Rated Audi number one, Porsche number two, BMW number three, Lexus, Subaru, and Kia. Uh, and Kia and Hyundai were rated very high. Even Honda was lower than Kia. Uh, Toyota was lower than Kia. So they're getting it right. They're getting uh, the, the cars that I have talked about, which is Hyundai and Kia and even Mazda and Mitsubishi, which I believe build a very, very good car, but they weren't ever rated that high. Well, now they're getting their accolades from Consumers Reports by being uh, given that rating. And people are coming and saying, hey, I'd like to buy a Kia, which has never happened before as brand new. Because we have, obviously we have a a, a Volkswagen dealer, a Nissan dealer, uh, and so on in, in Pensacola. And I can't compete with them by saying that I have cars that are brand new. Now the mileage would leave you to believe they're brand new. Um, but the savings is always there because I do the research on how much you can buy a new one before I buy a used one. Because obviously if you stop at front of your motors and get your car appraised, your next question is going to be, well, how much can you save me? And if I can't save you any money, on a used car versus a new car, I would be the first one to tell you, go buy the new. To me, there's got to be at least a minimum of $3,000 difference to make you sit up and notice and say, well, for that type of money, 
I'll go ahead and buy the one with 500 miles on it, 2,000 miles on it. And the way that we get those figures, folks, it's very important not to look at the list prices of a new car versus our car. What I'm going to do at Frontier Motors is something that's kind of unheard of in the car business. I'm going to volunteer to give you a price. And everybody knows how hard that is to get a price out of a car dealership without you twisting their arm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an out-the-door price in writing. So let's say you stopped in the Frontier Motors to get some advice on your trade-in and you spotted a car that might be a half a year old and you say, you know, this is the type of car I'm going to go buy at the new car dealer. I, but you're asking this dollar amount for it and I'm going to say, hey, don't worry about my asking price. What I'm going to do is give you one figure and that's the only figure that's important and that's the figure that you have to write a check for if you happen to be paying cash or if you're going to finance it, this is the dollar amount that you need to finance, which includes your trade-in, it includes the taxes, includes the state and county taxes, includes a dock fee, the tax on the dock fee, a license plate fee, a title fee, a registration fee. And if there's any other fees that are involved, we're going to include every single fee. And then that's what you circle and highlight and take the new car dealer and ask them to do the same thing. Now, sometimes I win by default. And what I mean by that is the new car dealer won't give you an out-the-door figure, which, which automatically eliminates them from the lineup as far as I'm concerned. I always tell people, hey, if the new car dealership uh, that you're doing business with won't give you an out-the-door figure, then don't do business with them. And make sure that when they give you an out-the-door figure, they include that license plate fee because some people don't realize that sometimes a new license plate can be as much as four to $500. Obviously, if you're transferring, it's not going to be that much, but it's very important because we include those fees. There's not going to be any uh, funny business going on after the fact. So we're going to give you an out-the-door figure, and then you're going to compare it to a brand new one. Now, I've already done the research on what a new one is, so I'm very sure that when I buy a car with very low miles like these Nissan uh, these Nissan cargo vans, as a matter of fact, we sold one the other day that had like 45 miles on it, and then compared it to a brand new one, and they ended up buying ours. So this is what I'm talking about when we talk about advice. Advice is what we offer. We this show, you'll notice I don't talk about individual cars. I don't talk about, well, here's a sale on this one, a sale on this one. At Frontier Motors, just so you know, we've never had a sale. And what I mean by that is that I feel that we should be giving fair deals to our customers every single hour that we're open. And that shouldn't be a game. That shouldn't be, well, let's hit them real high and then let's drop the price a bunch. Now, I'm not saying there can't be any negotiating because when you have a trade, especially when you have a trade in, I want to remind everybody that they trade in is an opinion. And what I mean by that is you could go to four different dealerships and get four different opinions on what your car is worth, even though the books all say the same. If the books say your car is worth $20,000, that doesn't mean you're going to get $20,000. What if you go to a dealership like Frontier Motors that could really use that car? Maybe I'll pay $21,000. And you go to another dealership that has five of them already in stock, He's not excited about that car and they give you $18,000 and that's where we come in to make sure that we give you the right opinion. And being an independent dealer, folks, this is also very important. If you go to a Lexus dealership with a diesel truck, let's say you bought a 2016 Chevy uh, Duramax with all the stuff on it. It was a $65,000 truck and you said, you know, I don't really need this truck anymore. I sold my fifth wheel and I don't need this big thing. I can't even park it anywhere. And you've decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and trade it in. But you, And you want a small RX 350 Lexus. So you go over to Lexus Mobile. How excited do you think that used car appraiser is about a big old diesel truck when you come on his lot? It's not going to happen, folks. They're going to make a phone call about your truck to a broker. And a broker is the middleman. And you want to cut out that middleman because the broker is going to take a little slice of the pie which means that your appraisal is going to be lower because he has to make money on it when he sells it. So the dealer calls the broker, let's say it's a $50,000 truck. Next thing you know, you're getting $48,000 for a $50,000 truck. At Frontier Motors, we sell diesel trucks. We sell RX 350s. We sell SUVs. We sell cars. We sell sports cars, wagons, pickup. We sell everything because we're an independent dealer. So you're going to get a fair appraisal on just about any car that's out there. The only car that I would say would might be a weird one would throw me for a loop would be an exotic car like a Lamborghini or maybe a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. 
But if you've got a normal car, including some of the, the semi-exotics like a, like a Porsche or uh, even a Maserati or any cars like that, we have no problem taking those in trade and paying top dollar for them because we have an outlet for those cars. Um, we don't really specialize in anything. I always use a, a Corvette as an example. If you go to uh, Leo's Corvettes on W Street, what, do, what does he specialize in? Well, he, he's a Corvette specialist. And if you go to the Mini Cooper dealership, what are they going to specialize in? Well, they're going to specialize in Mini Coopers. When you come to Frontier Motors, we really don't specialize in every in anything because we have the newer cars, like I mentioned, with really low miles on it. So we have customers coming in to say, well, how much can you save me on a six-month-old car? And we also have a lot of trade-ins that we can sell for under $10,000 because we take those and trade on those cars that still have a lot of life left in them that might last another six or seven or eight years or longer, hopefully. The average the average car on the road right now, if you don't know this, is 11.2 years. That's that's pretty interesting. When I got in the car in business 19, in the early 70s, the average age of a car on the road was not quite even seven years. Now, one reason people are keeping their cars longer is because the cars are lasting longer. They're not building them like they used to, which is a good thing. They're building them with better sheet metal. They're building them with more safety features and the reliability of a car instead of being a hundred thousand miles can be upwards of 200,000 miles, which is bad for me that I'm in the car selling business. Cause I would love you to trade more often, but cars do last longer. So the reality is the average age of a car on the road right now is 11.2 years. Now I can show you the arithmetic for trading on a more regular basis, like every five to six years, because obviously your five-year-old trade-in is worth a lot more than your 11-year-old trade-in. People say, well, I'm going to run my car to the ground. Well, guess what happens then? What's it worth when you run it in the ground? It worth nothing. A junkyard won't even give you $300 for it if it's worthless and it doesn't run. So it's worthless. So now you're looking at a $40,000 vehicle and you got to come up with $40,000. Well, if you would have traded that vehicle maybe five years ago, maybe your vehicle was still worth $20,000 on trade and you're buying a $40,000 car. So for $40,000, you could have had two cars in that time frame and not spend any more money. And you also save yourself a lot of headaches because obviously an older car that you're running into the ground is going to cost you maintenance. And I'm not talking about oil changes. I'm talking about things that are breaking as the car gets old. And then of course the big one hits, which is why I call them the big three, which is the transmission going out, the engine going out or the air conditioning going out. Now you've got to make a decision of what am I going to do with this car? Am I going to stick 2000 or $3,000 into it and cross my fingers and hope that nothing else goes wrong? Or am I just going to dump it and get a new one? And that's why I always urge people that have an older car to shop for a newer car before you need one. Because, and I'm Don, you're a prime example. You got a Mitsubishi you bought from me quite a long time ago. And I think you mentioned to me, you had quite a bit more than 100,000 miles on this car. 126 yesterday. 126. Yeah. You're a prime Mitsubishi example. Mitsubishi Outlander is a 2011 model. And you've had pretty good luck with it. Oh, it's been right? great. Yeah, good it really car. Has. Even though I make fun of it all the time, call it my toy car. <laughs> it really has been a fine, fine automobile. Yeah. So here's Don uh, driving that, that's around. That's number nine. Number I nine think. you bought from us. Mm-hmm. And by the way, folks, just so you know, and everybody's listening, including the audit uh, IRS, Don uh, does not uh, get a free car from but, Frontier But I'm Motors. willing to accept one. I just He's willing to accept one. Saying that, yeah. But uh, he does not get it. He actually comes in and pays for a car. Like but anybody Don, else. But Don's been a great customer of ours. And um, and when he's ready to trade his vehicle, and what I what I urge Don to do is to start thinking about it. And because if something goes wrong, now 128,000 miles on your car is not a lot of miles. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm talking more to the people once you start getting up over 150,000 miles of when things could start going wrong, right. which could cost you money. And and now let's say you kept the vehicle for another couple of years, you got 155,000 miles on it, and the transmission starts shifting a little funny, and you take it over to the transmission place, and they say, well, you're in the transmission on this car because it's got a six-speed transmission or seven-speed. Yeah. It's going to be $3,500. Well, you, if you had $3,500, to put into a transmission, you might as well use that as a cash down payment, your wreck car, your bad transmission car, and your 3500 and upgrade yourself, not necessarily to new ones, because Don doesn't, doesn't buy new ones, but you'll buy one that's got uh, maybe one or 30, two years 40, old. 30,000 miles. Yeah, yeah. 30,000 miles on. So this is what I'm talking about, folks. If you're driving around on a car that has got, uh, that's at the end of its life, why not pop in the front of your motor, spend a little bit of time 
with us and maybe do the research on what's next on the agenda. Doesn't mean you have to come in and buy it, but you'll know, you know, I really like the Mitsubishi Outlander. If you're looking for a midsize SUV, the nice thing about Frontier Motors, it's like going to a car show. We have them all lined up. So let's say that you're not sure what you want. You want a midsize SUV like an Outlander, maybe a Ford Explorer, maybe a Chevy Traverse, a Buick Enclave, maybe the GMC Acadia. You got the 4Runner and the Toyota Highlander. Then you got a two or three SUVs in the Lexus lineup and the Infiniti lineup and even the Porsche lineup. And then we have the Subarus right there and we have the Volvos right there and I can go on and on and on. But you know what? We have them all in one location. Imagine if you don't know what you want how many dealers you've got to meet and greet and give your information to just to be able to sit in a car. Most of these new car dealerships have their cars locked up for a reason because they want your information before you can even sit in the car. At Frontier Motors, our salespeople unlock every car, which is 400 of them, every morning. So if you're on a time constraint, you can sit in the cars at your leisure. And the number two thing, other than the looks of the car, that's going to persuade you if you like it or not, the number two thing is how comfortable it is when you slip behind the wheel if you're the driver. Obviously, if you're the passenger, it's not that big of a deal. But if you don't like the way it sits and you don't like the way that steering wheel tilts properly, if you don't like the visibility looking out of the windshield because you can't see the hood because it's sloped the wrong way, or perhaps the seat doesn't adjust exactly the way you want it, maybe either really short or really tall, uh, tall people, obviously, they really have to be careful what they buy because they're not going to fit in their car. They're going to hit their head on a lot of cars. Short people, are they have the same type of problems where I've had people that say, well, wait a minute, I, I got to limit this car because I can't get the seat up far enough to reach the pedals. And that's why on some of these vehicles, they got electric pedals now to help assist that because some manufacturers oh. were stupid when they did that. Like the Ford pickup trucks, for example, a lot of women weren't buying Ford pickup trucks because with the seat all the way forward, they couldn't reach the pedals. So I've even remember selling some cars down where we put pedal extenders mm -hmm. so the the females could drive them. And I don't, I shouldn't be picking on females, but because there's a lot of short men out there too. Sure. But I'm talking about someone that might be five feet, five feet one, a five foot one has got a problem with that. Well, years ago, Ford in their pickup trucks came out with a little push button thing, and that's an electric pedal. Brings that pedal up about five inches which is really smart because now they're not losing any of the female clientele anymore. So they're making the vehicles uh, to, to be able to be comfortable when you slip behind the wheel. And that's getting back to Frontier Motors that you do not have to give us your information if you don't want to. Most people that come in, they meet a salesperson and they're going to be pleasantly surprised that they're not going to get the squeeze put on them to, so to speak, to make a buying decision today. And that's what you get from almost every dealership out there. That's why people hate the car buying process. They hate going into a dealership because they're always going to get, well, let me ask the customer, what is it going to take for me to put you behind the wheel of that car today? You know, you, you heard that. <laughs> My favorite I mean, question. That is yeah. such a, that's been around since I was two years old. What's it going to take? Well, I'll tell you what, if you give me the keys and don't charge me for it, I'll do it right now. Right there. I mean, that's a stupid question when you think about it. What's it going to take? How about, how about getting those $800 payments down to 150? Yeah, I'd make a decision. I won't even shop at Frontier Motors. I'll just buy your brand new car right now. This is a stupid question. Why don't you just give me the price, Mr. Salesman? Why don't you do what Frontier Motors has asked me to ask you? Let's give me an out the door figure so I can compare it to Frontier Motors and make a decision on which is a better value for me. And let's say you're looking at a car at Frontier Motors with 5,000 miles on it. It still has factory warranty, has a clean car fax, it's a non-smoker, it's exactly what you want. And you go to the new car dealership and they can sell you a brand new car for the same price. What would I tell you to do? Buy the new one. But why would I send you to do that? Because I know it's not going to happen. Because I've already done my research where I know the invoice of that new car. I know the incentives, that little cash back they always get. Everybody knows about that cash back at the end of the year and they throw all these rebates at you and stuff. I know what all those are so that when I'm buying my car with 5,000 miles on, that even after I take all that in consideration, I'm still saving you enough money where you'd say, you know what? I'll buy that 5,000 mile car as long as there has no issues. As long as the Carfax is clean. And you know, just so you know, our Carfax, you don't have to ask for. The cars are unlocked and they're right in the glove box. Just look at them. Every single one. I, I, I get so tired of when I, I'm tired is not the right word, but frustrated with customers when I appraise their car mm -hmm. and I do the car fact. First thing I do is do the car fact. You know, we, right. we sure, do appraisals by phone, Don. I take my phone, I scan the ID number. 
And people say, how do you do that? Well, every car has got a barcode, just like the barcode of gro- in grocery store. So I scan the ID number, and the first thing comes, Carfax. I hit the Carfax. I see, no, you had a major accident three years ago. Major. Airbags were deployed. This thing had to be towed. Well, tell me about that. Ooh, I didn't know about that. I said, well, well I just bought the car two years ago. Mm-hmm. I said, well, didn't you ask the dealer for a Carfax report? Well, they said it was good. Well, what is good? Good is what they think good might not, might be that it's not totaled. Yeah. That's just been in a major accident. It never got totaled. They put it back together with brand new parts. So he says, well, it's good. Folks, that might be good, but it's not good based on the fact that you paid for a car that hasn't been in a major accident. You don't know, just so you know, folks, and, and remember this when you're car shopping, it's not illegal for dealership that sell you a car that's been in a major accident and they don't even have to tell you about it. Now they can't lie about it, but they don't have to tell you about it. It's not a law. It's buyer beware state. That's why Carfax is our great. We not only have a Carfax, we also do the auto check. We do both. We have two history reports just to make sure the information is the same. Every once in a while, one will have an accident, one doesn't. I'm not telling you not to buy a car that's been in an accident. I'm just telling you get inspected and get a deal. Sometimes we take cars and trade that have been in accidents. We don't send our customers away because the car has been in an accident. We'll take them and trade, but we'll tell them, hey, I'm going to have to give you less money for it because I have to give somebody a bargain on it. So that's what I'm saying. But know that history report. By the way, we do them at no charge at Frontier Motors. We've only got a couple of minutes left, so we want to let you know that if you go on Facebook, uh, just put uh, Frontier Motors in there. We've got a great Facebook page. We also have a great website. So uh, we have 400 cars in inventory. As a matter of fact, we just upgraded our website. It's very, very simple. Um, and we have prices on every single car. You can email us or you can text us. We've got the Carfax reports right on there at no charge. Some dealerships' websites, you click on the Carfax report and they make you pay for it. And when you do it at Frontier Motors, it's no different, no, no, no extra charge. We also got uh, this uh, this show right here is going to be on YouTube in a couple of days. So if you go to YouTube, type in Frontier Motors, you're going to see my mug. And if you want to pass this along, we would love you to do that. Um, uh, just to let people uh, out there know that. Frontier Motors is a dealership that not only has 400 cars in stock, but that's here to give you advice when you're in the market. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a buying advice. Maybe you got a car that had been damaged and you want to know what's the car worth now. We can give you a letter of diminished value. That means, hey, maybe you'll get some extra money from the insurance company because we both know it's not going to be worth the same after a major accident. What if your car got totaled? We can give you a letter of what the appraisal would be at uh, retail to make sure the insurance company is giving you the proper dollars amount. And folks, just so you know, we do this at no charge. We don't, we do this and we don't make you feel obligated, even if you're not buying a car from us. Because we know the more advice we give the people and not make them feel obligated, the more in turn they're going to send their friends, their friends and relatives and neighbors to Frontier Motors. And it's worked because in 20 years, we've become the number one dealer in the South. We sell over 200 cars a month which by the way means I've got to buy 200 cars a month. I would love to buy your car. If you've got a car sitting there, it's not doing nothing for you, bring it to Frontier Motors and let us just write you a check for it. Again, that's Frontier Motors, 230 Beverly Parkway. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Hopefully that's it. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay, come in today. Doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier got the right price frontier we'll treat you mighty nice frontier motors low overhead crunch